I was very fortunate, I think, to be here in Auckland when TV2 started, you know, and um, I was in their first uh, soap opera was called A Going Concern, and I played a country girl sort of coming in, down to the city and then worked in the pub. Um, oh, I just loved the money. and. <laughs> <laughs> we were, I was working with some good people like Lee Grant and people that had been working at the Mercury Theatre and I was just sort of in awe of it all and really enjoyed that. Radio Waves was set in a radio station but I was actually never in the radio station. I was working out again playing a country girl um, uh, and was training horses in South Auckland. I was a groom. In fact I lied about that job because I said I come from Tomaranui and they said can you ride and I said well, I come from Tomaranui. <laughs> Yes, of course I can ride. I couldn't ride. And I went and had some lessons. I was terrible. And, I, and so they didn't let me ride the horses. I just led the horses around. But I got the job. That's also memorable because I had my first screen kiss with Andy Anderson. Yeah, that was fun. That was one of those kid old, um, shows that they did a lot of in the 70s. There was Hunter's Gold and... Um, you know, you can probably think of some others. Anyway, Gather Your Dreams is one of those. And again, I was um, said, yes, I can dance and I can sing, but I couldn't very well. But, um, and I think it shows <laughs> if you ever saw that. But again, that was, um, it was um, based on a travelling um, vaudeville group that went around, you know, the local towns. It was great. I remember being in Shark in the Park. I do remember being in it. Um, but there were, uh, it came on. I said, oh, this storyline, this will be interesting. There's an actress coming on playing somebody's mother. Um, oh, it's probably one of my friends. I'll watch it. And I walked in the door. And I had forgotten all about that episode of Shark in the Park. So that's quite interesting. The one I do remember, um, and the one that I always thought, yes, I did Shark in the Park, and I was very proud of it, was um, a director by Jeanette MacDonald. And I just remember that I, it, she just gave me a couple of very pertinent pieces of um, direction that really helped. Um, and that was another that was another gritty role. You know, I'd left my child in the car or something, and I think I have a bit of a drinking problem. Um, the other one, I obviously had blanked out for obvious reasons. I did a terrible Australian accent. <laughs> um, I was actually in it twice, but um, the first time I left New Zealand, I went to, to Melbourne first and I had a very small role there and I was very excited about being on Prisoner. But then later, when about six, seven years later, um, I was invited down to do, and I was living in Sydney by then, I was invited down to do um, about 10 weeks in it playing an alcoholic lawyer. And that is one of my highlights, I think. The, the women in that show were so funny. I have never laughed so much. A very fantastic sense of humour. Um, and we just had fun. And it was great because, you know, once you've sort of no makeup, and I, I must say I really love not wearing any makeup on in, in the theatre or on screen um, and not wearing shoes. I just feel totally relaxed then. Prisoner, I still get um, fan letters from people in England who watch it and they're collecting all the, you know, signatures and stuff. I actually did about seven weeks on it and actually ended up working with Rima Tiwiata, which is I, very strange to suddenly be over there working with Rima on that. But um, I was playing a, um, oh, again, a little toughy role, um, Mickey Pratt, who was sort of um, held somebody hostage and had a gun. But I found that sort of, um, I loved that, I loved that too, because it was out of the ordinary. I can't bear playing somebody's mother or social worker or, uh, anyway. Give me something different. I came in in the last three months of the third series. I think they did three, did they? Yeah. Um, playing Cheryl, actually a forerunner to Cheryl West, if you ask me, from Cheryl from out west I was, um, and was a great embarrassment to Alona's character who was, you know, trying to run for the council or something like that. I had a lot of fun with that. Again, um, a, a sort of combination of comedy and drama, which I really enjoy. I just had a lot of fun because I was playing um, an extreme character, so I could, you know, so I could do anything and get away with anything. Yeah, except I got to wear the vinyl boots and the, you know, very unattractive clothes, and everybody else was looking gorgeous. Very big shoulder pads and very big hair, mm. <laughs> and a lot of plastic, unfortunately, and vinyl for my character. But I think it's a real shame that they didn't continue with it. It was so popular, I couldn't believe it when they stopped it. You know, it could have gone on at least, you know, another 
couple of series. Again, another um, strong, strong role for a, a woman because she was sort of like a hit. She was the front of cover story, um, and lots of opportunities there for personal stories, you know, and um, regular work. <laughs> And it was in Wellington, the city I lived in, so it was, it was great. I liked her because she was strong and forthright and direct, you know, and um, I seemed to be cast in those sort of roles, yeah. Everybody used to say to me, but have you been on Shortland Street? And I go, no. But I think I had been actually once ages ago and I tried to um, erase it from my memory. But I was on quite recently playing um, Nicole, oh God, what's her name? Sally Martin's mother. I think um, the character that plays Nicole, um, it just came on for about five weeks. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I was playing, I don't know if you saw that, but she was a homophobic mother because Nicole was having a, an affair with Maya. She was the les little lesbian in it. And I was the homophobic mother from Tauranga. And there was a lot of flack in the paper about it, saying that we're not a homophobic city at all. Um, I loved that. And, um, but then they brought me back and unfortunately they toned the character down and she became a bit bland. Mm. So not so much fun. Yes, I loved being directed by Sima Yerali. She was fantastic. Um, apron strings, that's a really good example of what I was telling you about before, that I love to take my makeup off and my shoes off. I don't know, I feel really relaxed. And Sima, I, I I hadn't done much film, and I was, but I, so I was really excited about being cast in that. And um, I remember the first scene I did, I was nervous, and I thought, "Oh, don't get nervous, Jim. Please don't get nervous." I mean, it's you know. Although when I see the film now, I don't, you know, you don't notice, but I knew inside, and I didn't want to have that knot in my stomach. Um, anyway, so I had another couple of days off before I filmed the next lot and I just, I went away and did some drawing. I just sort of tried to do something totally different and anyway it went, but she was fantastic. She, because she's got, she's so relaxed and it makes you feel fabulous and the work that you're doing is just like, you know, spot on and um, I loved it. I was meant to be doing um, a play at the Auckland Theatre Company, a Roger Hall play, which I was starting the following week. And they said, oh, you're on the shortlist for the, the Blue Rose. I went, oh, oh OK, yeah. Um, and then it got closer and closer, and I was meant to start rehearsals on the Monday. And I heard on the Thursday that I had that role. And I said, well, how big is it? And they said, it's an ongoing role. You want to do it? And I went, oh, is it OK? Ongoing with one or two days here and there. Oh, OK. But I don't think I can be in the play and do this, because the play went on tour. So I rang the director and pulled out of the play, which was a terrible thing to do, but they forgave me. But I thought I'd be, I would really like to do something different because I hadn't done any t ongoing television for a long time. Anyway, so I went in to have a chat with Rachel Lang and the, the producer, Chris Bailey, and they told me that it was actually... They explained the character to me, and I thought, how amazing, there's this person here. And they said, we want you to be an inspiration to every woman over 60. I went, oh, OK, I can do that. <laughs> You, know, you steal this money, you do this and you do this and then you change your name and I'm going, oh, and you are part of the Blue Rose, you get a tattoo. And I'm going, I get a tattoo, I'm going to be part of the Blue Rose. I was very excited and I was very excited because I was working with Antonia and Siobhan from Outrageous Fortune and I love that show. So, yeah, that's the Blue Rose. So, mm, you know, I had, we had a great time. Very lucky, one, one two television awards for Best Actress and a film award and, you know, nominated a couple of other times. So actually I very, um, feel very chuffed that I've had the opportunity to do so much. I have one ambition. I'd like to do um, a sitcom, yeah, as, yeah, a sort of amusing comedy sitcom.